you. Um, thanks, Adrian. It's such an honor to be here. I didn't realize you'd get my whole bio, but you know more than most people know about me. Um, I'm the Transportation Policy Director at SPUR. SPUR is a nonprofit, member-supported, urban planning and good government think tank, and uh, we do a lot of advocacy and education. We publish policy reports. We've been around for over 100 years. We have helped with a lot of regional projects like the creation of BART, heavily involved in San Francisco, housing, transportation sustainability planning. We opened a San Jose office about two and a half years ago, some of you may be familiar with, and um, have published reports for San Jose on urban design, the downtown, the future of downtown San Jose, and on transportation, a report on BTA called Freedom to Move, which I authored. Um, we are soon opening an office in Oakland as well next year. So um, our, our theory is that we can do great local and regional planning if we work for cities, with cities first. And we are a city-focused organization, and our goal is, is wonderful cities to live in and that are also sustainable. Um, it's really my treat to talk to you about this topic. Uh, surprisingly, we don't get to talk about that much because mostly we're trying to move along projects that are in the present, not in the future. Um, so briefly, why do we like mass transit? And we at Spur really like mass transit a lot. And I think the primary reason is about space, but there are many others that are related. And as um, you've probably seen this picture, mass transit, a lot of people in one vehicle, takes up a lot less space than everything else. And we're actually starting to run out of space a little bit. And space used for um, cars is uh, taking up space that's not being used for people, for housing, for parks, or other types of amenities. The other reasons we like mass transit, it actually supports our regional economy, and we have a very much a regional economy here in the Bay Area, and without mass, mass transit, it actually would not be possible. And that's going to become increasingly true as our highways and inter-county routes are, are hitting capacity, as you well know. Um, other reasons to like mass transit, quickly, are safety. As you know, um, traffic injury and, or traffic deaths are one of the leading causes of death in our country, and it's really a crisis, actually. And transportation is, mass transit is part of the solution for that. And there's also a real social reason we do mass transit. And it's so that people can participate in the economy, meet their social needs, et cetera if they don't want to drive and don't have availability of a car um, because walking and biking won't just won't cut it for most people. Um, so when we think about mass transit, there, I think there's a few dimensions that are important to mention, public or private. And I think we typically think of it as public. Samtrans is an example of that, so is Caltrain. But we also have always had private transit, as you heard about, and um, it's kind of making a comeback, as you know. And there's private that is, um, I guess, subsidized, you could say, such as the employer shuttles, and also private transit that is trying to serve a market. Like maybe you've heard of bridge or chariot, and those are private, market-driven mass transit. Um, our public transit is typically subsidized, although in a lot of other countries that's not the case. On certain routes, you actually are trying to um, recover your costs. Drivers and no drivers. This has been a debate for a long time. The air BART that's opening next week, actually, uh, has no drivers. BART was not supposed to have drivers. People seem to like drivers in their transit vehicles. So this will, be, this will go on. But um, labor costs are one of the highest costs of transit. So this will constantly be a debate we have to think about. Uh, above ground and below ground. Mass transit, when it was first below ground in London, was um, spooky and people were skeptical about it, whether it's such a good idea. Now people really like it sometimes because it's fast, but I think above ground is also making a comeback now, and it depends on what you're looking for. Above, below ground is very expensive, as we're finding in a lot of the projects in this region and others. Um, one operator or many. Um, BART is an example of a mass transportation system where you can pretty much only run BART and it's very specific to one agency and uh, one type of transit. On the other hand, a lot of our railroads can be used by any number of operators, and that's another thing that we're kind of having to think about. How do we use our infrastructure efficiently, and does it make sense to build transit that's only 
uh, for one type of transportation. And uh, one more dimension to think about, flexible or permanent? Um, do you want your transit on tracks so it creates stability for your community and attracts development in the long run? Or do you need flexibility so you can send that rail vehicle or that bus over here or there? And lastly, uh, another dimension to think about is dedicated lane or mixed flow so for surface transit or transit that's on streets how much do you want to prioritize it? And I think this is a really important question for our region for the future of transit in general. Um, how much are we willing to give it its own space? So uh, the Bay Area seems to like mass transit. We keep investing in it. Um, last week, was that last week election day, voters um, chose to spend more money on mass transit in San Francisco County and in Alameda County and um, Santa Clara County has a history of paying for mass transit, as does San Mateo County and many of our counties. So voters want to pay for mass transit. Some of the projects I want to highlight, this, I realize this is really difficult to read. Um, it's hard to find a map of the future transit network of the Bay Area, actually. And this is one that somebody made for Spur. Um, but down, let's see if I can point. There we go. Um, so in the future of uh, the mass transit in the region, um, just a few things I'd point out. The smart rail up in Sonoma and Marin counties, which is um, reviving an old past commuter rail line, or actually it was not commuter rail before, but they're making commuter rail at a pretty low cost. Um, at the high cost end, we have the central subway project, which is light rail underground in San Francisco and um, the BART extension from Alameda County to San Jose to Santa Clara, which is quite expensive. BART is very expensive. Some of the other mass transit is eBART out in um, Contra Costa County, BART to Livermore, which just got some funding last week. And then BRT projects all over the region, bus rapid transit, um, high capacity, high speed transit projects, but we're actually having a little difficulty getting those off the ground. So uh, in the long run, the next generation of mass transit, what are some things that actually change? And it's where the energy comes from, it's how we propel the vehicles, um, what, where the guidance system is, how does it navigate, and what kind of infrastructure does it need? And if you change those things, then you actually leap from bus rapid transit and BART and things I was talking about too. To the next generation, admittedly, we don't talk about these things a lot, but I think it's always important to um, have our minds open to what we could be, what the next generation is that could produce a lot more benefit at a much lower cost for us. Um, the autonomous bus, I think, is worth talking about. It, the autonomous car is getting a lot of attention, but we should really be thinking about autonomous vehicles generally. An autonomous bus could actually solve a lot of our issues about serving suburban areas that are not likely to change a lot. I mean, it's hard to build, you know, make those really dense and transit friendly in the next few decades. So um, maybe the autonomous bus is the answer, but we'd have to figure out what to do about our streets. Are you going to want to share a lane with this autonomous bus or do you want to give it its own lane? Should it only go on small routes in neighborhoods or do you want these going all over the county? But, so this is actually the most likely and tangible, I think, next generation technology for us. Um, but I'll go through some of the more fascinating examples. This is Elon, Musk's Hy Elon Musk, Musk's Hyperloop project, which got a lot of media attention, and he wrote quite a detailed report about the potential for the Hyperloop in California rather than high-speed rail. Um, and it's really next generation. We're very much thinking about rail projects right now, and it's a vacuum tube. I think um, we're looking at 4,000 miles per hour, and uh, I don't... It could be a good idea. I think it's hard for folks to get their head around and feel ready for something that's so different from what we have today. Um, and I'll go through a few other of these next generation ideas. This one might be a little bit more imaginable, which is, um, this is called the Solar Bullets. And, um, they're attempting, thinking about this in Arizona, some folks are, 220 miles per hour, and it it's, um, runs on solar energy. But as you can see, it would actually be pretty, um, intensive to build all that infrastructure. 
this is all actually similar to the Hyperloop, another vacuum tube kind of transport. Um, this is called tubular rails, and the rails are attached to the rail to the um, to the train car, and the energy and the wheels are in these um, elevated rings and. Because of that, it could have a lot lower construction costs. This one I thought was a little bit imaginable for us in the region. Um, this is called the straddling bus, trying to solve the problem of coexisting with cars. You would just straddle the cars and go on top. It would require, this is a little bit hard for me to imagine, um, getting political buy-in on our streets. But it does, it does solve a problem um, of getting transit riders out of mixed flow on the streets. Um, so those are just a few next generation ideas, but I really want to take, um, I don't know how much time I have, a few minutes to talk about how we could do so much more with the transit we have and think about the next generation of our own mass transit. Um, I wrote up their scheduled railroad, but the idea is that we can take our railroads, of which we still have quite a few in the region, and do so much more with them. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the future ideas for Caltrain to have service that runs far more frequently and more quickly by upgrading what we have, but also thinking about how we run that railroad. <coughs> Tightly scheduled trains, you know, of course, with the deal with the grade crossings. But um, that's also true for the railroads where we run Capital Corridor, the ACE train, and in the future high-speed rail. Like, how can we actually make a lot um, increase the effectiveness of the investments we've already made. And this is starting to happen in other places in the Northeast and has already happened in other countries where you, your existing commuter rail um, can do trains every five minutes. And it's just a matter of scheduling everybody carefully. Um, of course, high-speed rail also in our future and um, expected to run through the county here. And it's been around for 40 plus years in other places. and. Um, I don't have a lot to say about this, but I think this is our near future of mass transit. It's actually in the works, and it's actually funded, so I think we need to decide, are we gonna get behind this and make it great in our communities, and then make it a connect to all these other systems that we have. Uh, another place where we could make our transit so much better today is on fair payment. Um, I'm guessing, like me, you've had an issue with your Clipper card one day or another, or maybe you don't have one, but there's no reason for that. We could be paying with our cell phones. You shouldn't need a Clipper card. Uh, have to buy a special card for transit. And this is something that's gonna take a lot of constituents to come together to change, but it's a way to make our mass transit far better today in the near future. Um, accessible information. I think our mass transit in the region could be a lot less confusing. We have, depending on how you count, two or three dozen transit operators. And that's a lot of investment, and why don't those, re those um, systems connect better, both physically, but also when you have information. So this is a new technology called Transit Screen, which is not really that new of technology. It's just a new idea to project transit information onto a surface. I, th surface, I think it's brilliant, actually, because signs and things are really expensive. So in the near future, we could have much better information wayfinding about mass transit. Um, this is a picture of London and, and thinking about the future of transit. Are we going to turn it into a really great network? Transit doesn't, if you have one line, you'll get a few people who use it to go to work and back, but what you need is a network. And we have an awkward geography for a network in the Bay Area, but if you start putting all our projects together in the pipeline and the places people want to go, um, we can build an interesting network, but it also means making it seamless, information-wise, connection-wise, and and I think the place that's really advanced this concept is London, and they are building more and more transit, investing in incredible amounts of money in it to make an even more robust network. And they're actually building a new network called Crossrail, which is mapped here, um, to alleviate pressure on their existing tube system, the existing London Underground. So it's really um, a place I don't think we're at yet, is really thinking about all our projects that each county is voting for as a whole network. Um, this is what's emerging, which I mentioned, which is on-demand transit. And this is a picture, I think, of Bridge. Chariot's another company, and I'm sure there are others. And you're gonna see more of this. And they're trying to meet a market demand for transit. I think we need to ask, are these gonna become part of our transit network? Will we be open to them and let them connect 
And is this just another way to get people maybe out of cars, increase mobility? And I think we think it is, but we need to be proactive about how it interacts in our communities. So I'll just close with this last slide. This is a great marketing campaign that LA Metro has done, and I think marketing is actually a big part of the future of mass transit. And marketing is the way we market other goods, and we have a long ways to go on that too. So I hope that we can work together um, to make transit, mass transit great today and the future. Thank you.